We are live. So uh, welcome, guys, to another edition, a little bit later this time, at 7 p.m., of uh, team training uh, with me, Joey Huber, your host, uh, Low Stress, High Profit, Freedom for Gym Owners. This one is all about team building, guys. So um, super excited for this. I love building teams. It is probably one of the most difficult tasks to really get dialed in. But once you do, um, it is such a great skill set to have. Um, and my goal today is to walk you through exactly um, why you need to build a team um, and what you need to do to build a really strong team that is that works really well together. And then of course, as always at FitBiz University, that is where we teach you exactly how to do it um, by giving you all of the done for you stuff. Um, so before we get into the tactics, because I love tactics, I love getting tactical with it and saying like, do this thing. You know, a lot of, a lot of groups or a lot of people um, they just love to give you their ideals, right? They love to, they don't get very tactical. They might say, um, hey, build a team so you can have your freedom and lead that team and, and have them, you know, hit these big goals. That's great. That's motivating, right? Um, and that's not wrong, but how? Like, what should I do? And like, why, why does that make sense? I like to get down to that stuff, the tactics of exactly what to do, um, why to do it, and how it's going to have the impact uh, that it's going to have on you. So the first thing that I want to go over um, is talking about why we're going to build a team, okay? So it, a long story short, or, or a, a way to paraphrase this is you will absolutely accomplish more with a team than without a team than, than you're doing by yourself. Right. And that's, that's the, that's the big picture is you are just going to accomplish more, right. You're going to get more stuff done. So no matter what your mission is, right. You will do a better job at it. You will do it faster. Uh, you will do it bigger uh, than you could without a team. So let's say your, your mission is to help you know, a thousand people in your, your local community. Like, look, you're, it's going to take you a long time to do that if you insist on doing everything yourself and not building a team, right? So my job here isn't to convince you to build a team. It's your business. Do whatever you want with it. But I'm just telling you uh, a big reason why I've been able to make the strides that I have as quickly and as, and it, as largely as I have been able to make is because of a team, right? I'm, I'm limited on what I can do myself. I have, you know, the same 24 hours in a day as anybody else. Uh, and I have to sleep and do things. So there's only so much that I can do on my own, right? So having other people to help you with your mission, it will absolutely get done more effectively, quicker, bigger, all of that stuff. So that's why we build a team is because you guys all started a business for a, some reason. And we want to get that reason accomplished better, faster, uh, bigger than you going alone, right? So that's why we're building a team to help you with helping that thousand people in your community, making a bunch of profit. Um, I mean, what, what, whatever reason you started your business for, only you know that, right? Um, and, and creating that impact, right? And maybe even taking it a step farther, you know, and, and helping, you know, doing things that maybe you didn't start a business for, but now that you have this business, it gives you, it's a vehicle to maybe give back to your community, help kids that need it, whatever it may be, you can do that even better when you have a strong team handling your business, right? So that's why we're going to be building a team. It allows you as the entrepreneur to do what you do best and what you enjoy doing, um, and you know what? It gives you the option to decide that. So uh, maybe what you do best is train people. And that's really what you want to do. And you hate marketing and you hate sales and you hate, uh, you know, leading a team or whatever it may be. You hate those things and you really want to uh, sell. Well, or, <clears throat> I'm sorry, you really want to train. But um, until you have a team, dude, you have no choice, right? You have to do all those things to have a business. Having a team gives you the choice to do what you like doing, right? And it also gives you the choice to work on the business and not in the business, right? And, and that's something we're going to talk a lot about today is the difference between that, uh, what it looks like, and uh, how do you know you are ready to step away from the day-to-day -day tasks and work on the business, right? And there's no point in stepping away from doing the day-to-day -day tasks unless you know exactly what you're going to be doing with your time once you do step away and how that's going to help propel the business in ways that it otherwise 
couldn't go, right? So there's no point in stopping to stopping doing sales, right? Um, and bringing on a, a sales a sales manager or something like that. If you don't have a good plan of action of what you're going to do with your time as the entrepreneur, that's going to accelerate you faster than if you were doing sales, right? It's not about, I don't teach to get your time back to do nothing, right? And just hang out at the beach. That's not what I teach. I teach is how to get your time back and then reuse it in a better way to go even faster, right? Um, if that's the purpose of your of your business, which it should be, okay? So it allows you to do what you want to do and what you enjoy doing. So many times people are stuck doing things that maybe even they're good at, but they just hate freaking doing them. Well, guess what? When you have a great team, um, you don't have to do those things every single day just to make money. As an example, I'm great at sales, right? I've been selling for the past 10 years, <clears throat> you know, specifically fitness, but I don't enjoy doing it, right? I did at first, but after you've been through thousands of reps, um, the the excitement uh, for me, at least, you know, it goes away because I, I don't want to get you know, rejected by somebody who doesn't see the value in taking care of themselves, right? Um, it, you know, I, I, I just, I, I've only can have that conversation so many times. And at first it was extremely exciting and I love getting people started and I love them making the commitment to themselves. But guys, I mean, and, and you could be different, but after you have that conversation a thousand times and they're still saying, yeah, but you know, I, I think I can do this on my own and, you know, and save, save a few bucks. I'm just like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, right. And so if I can pull myself out of that conversation, so I'm more focused and, and clear minded and I'm not getting this rejection. Right. Um, which in the grand scheme of things, if, if I close, if I personally close at 40% or 50%, that, that's not going to change the business too much. Whereas the negative energy from me being told no 50% of the time that I'm pitching, right, that has a bigger impact on my business because it makes, it clouds my mind space, right? And so that might be a great reason to offload sales, even if you are good at doing it, is maybe you don't like it or it's not the best use of your time as that visionary entrepreneur. Okay, so that's the second one why. Um, the next reason that I think you should build a team is number one, it sparks innovation, right? It, it, it forces people to come up with a new solution to a problem that you otherwise wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to get to that solution by yourself. Because if you are by yourself, there's no feedback loop. And so for anything new to be born, you have ideas and you speak and then you have feedback and then you receive that feedback unless you're just having a whole conversation with yourself you're not getting these other ideas from other collaborators or people um, that keep driving that innovation forward so you could say to yourself well man you know um we need to our average person loses about seven pounds you know per month we'd really like to get it up to eight or nine as a team um after tracking these numbers and you as the owner might say, well, let's, what do you think about this? We could track macros or calories, but the winning idea might come from somebody that's not you. If it's, if it's you by yourself and you're a one man show, you're limited to your own ideas, right? Obviously, if you have other people contributing to that conversation, you will absolutely come up with ideas that you wouldn't have come up with if it was only you. And I think innovation, um, and creativity and all of that stuff is is a is one of the reasons why businesses exist is because they they think they found a better way to fix a problem right people have been overweight for thousands of years for centuries right and i'm sure that every so often there's a new thing that comes out to try to fix that problem, right? And it's usually a team of people that say, hey, we got a problem here. How do we overcome this, right? And if you have more sharp minds at the table than just one, you will come up with better solutions. Well, guess what? That's better for your business. That's better for everybody involved, right? Very rarely will I come up with a, a knockout solution without ever talking to anybody else first. Even if I just talk to my wife and she's like, no, that's dumb. Then I'll be like, hmm, is it really dumb? Or does she just not like it? Right. And it but it makes me think, you know what I mean? Um, and so uh, I think it's really important to have somebody to bounce that off of uh, and who better than somebody that works for your company. Right. 
Um, it also creates competition and accountability, right? And so for me, I love, I love competition. I love it, right? Um, I, and I'm sure a lot of you guys do too. You're entrepreneurs, man. Um, you, you decided to start a company and you want to get after it every single morning. What better way than to introduce some friendly competition? So we have team meetings uh, every single month. I'm sorry, every week we have our team meeting. Um, and then we put what our top one is, right? This is a little bit, uh, I won't go too deep into this. This is pretty, uh, you know, Fitbit is I don't want Jason and the team getting mad at me for giving you all the, the juicy secrets. Um, but uh, we give our top one, right? And, uh, and we say this out of, if we have to do anything this week, this is the one thing that I'm going to get done that I'm going to get accomplished, right? And it goes on the slide deck for the team meeting, right? And guess what? The next week, we have that brought back up and that person has to either have accomplished that top one or tell the rest of the team, I didn't do it. And here's why. Right. And after a week or two weeks or three weeks, you can't get away with excuses. Right. Because the rest of the team are, is looking at you like, uh, dude, you said you were going to do that three weeks ago. And it's really important because you named it as your top one out of everything that you should, you should be doing or that you could do. Right. And so I love that competition and I love that competitiveness because I'm competitive with myself. Right. Um, and I'm going to be like, yeah, am I going to make my top one, you know, um, correct this spelling error in my macros sheet for gym owners? No, I'm going to be like, build a bomb ass paid in full play that is going to make them $10,000 in four hours. Like I will create that. And if I put that down on paper and I, and I, and I tell my team, I'm going to do that shit, I got to do it. Right. And so um, I love that even if it's just competition with myself, but those guys, they're going to hold me accountable. Right. And so that is going to drive the entire company forward in, in a momentous way that couldn't be done by myself. I'm pretty self-motivated. Um, but I mean, there's even, uh, man, you know, telling, telling what you're going to do to other professionals and other people that rely on you um, for their livelihood, like you got to get that stuff done. Um, and I think it's a great way to do it is by building a strong team. Um, next, uh, pressure, man. I love pressure. So team, teams create pressure, especially when it comes to deadlines, when it comes to getting things done. And this can also be leveraged in your meetings, right? So as an example, when I meet with my gym team um, and I have my four we call ourselves the four horsemen, right? Me as the owner, I have my sales manager, my operations manager, and my head trainer, right? And we meet every single Monday um, and we talk about what the game plan is for the month and then how we are going to accomplish that and who's responsible for what. Now, this would be your role still as the owner once you have your team. And I'll talk about that later in this video on why, but you have to set the expectations and 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 identify who is going to be contributing what to reach your goal. As an example, let's say our goal this month is $15,000 of profit, okay? That's what the business wants to create. Well, we have to work everything backwards, right? How much recurring revenue uh, do we already have uh, guaranteed coming in this month, okay? What are our expenses going to be this month, right? So we already know those two numbers. We're going to spend this, this amount right? And we already have this amount guaranteed to come in. Well, how do we get to $15,000 in profit? Because let's say our recurring revenue matches our expenses, which is great, by the way. Um, so we are guaranteed to have a break-even month, but that's not our goal, right? Our goal is to make 15K. So how do we do that? Right. Well, we could run events. We could get referrals. We could market. We could blow up our Facebook group. We could put out a new sign. We could uh, do a reactivation campaign, reaching out to all old, old members or old leads. We could. There's a lot of things that we could do. So let's say we together decide on what we're going to do. We think this is the best strategy. Well, who's responsible for doing what? Right. So we start getting granular with it. Let's say we decide that we want to run a um, what's the one we just, the beast before the feast. We just did a uh, challenge and we called it the um, beast before the feast. And this was for members only plus their referrals, right? So we broke that sucker up in between four people and who's responsible for what? Me as the owner, I'm responsible for making sure that all the roles are doing their job and everything's covered. Now, I'm not doing any of it myself, none of the day to day, but I'm still responsible for making sure and holding everybody accountable. So I lead these meetings. I talk about where they're at. I 
monitor things, right? I look to make sure it's getting done. Again, I'm not doing it, but I'm making sure it's being executed. Next, the sales manager. Well, guess what? He's responsible for meeting with everybody that shows interest and closing them on this program. Our ops manager, he is responsible for, for making sure all the emails, text messages, Facebook posts, all of that stuff goes out on time, is compelling, copies great, creative state, uh, great, pictures look awesome, and we're just getting in front of as many eyeballs as possible. Then we have our lead trainer. He's responsible to, for the trainers to make sure they're pushing it before and after, after every class that all of their clients are signing up, that people that really need it are getting registered. They're closing deals. They're writing contracts. They're doing all of these things. Um, and But together as a team, that's how we're going to make $15,000 off of this one challenge that we otherwise could not do by myself. I would be so burned out trying to do all of that plus everything else, right? So the point of having this team is you can reach levels and limits that you could not accomplish by yourself and you just start building this crazy momentum, right? And that's how a four person team could knock out a huge task. And that's how you can start making 15, 20 grand every single month in profit because you develop a plan, you hold each other accountable. You say, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this, right? And then you make it happen. So um, without getting into the next part, I, I want to explain something quick. With any, with any business, there is always two pieces of it, right? There's people and there's processes. A big part of what FitBiz does is give you the battle-tested best practices and the best processes to run your business, right? Your job as the entrepreneur is to find the right people to do those processes. So even with the, the absolute best processes humanly possible, which we like to think we have, um, the wrong people doing them, will, you will not be successful, right? And vice versa. Let's say you have the absolute best people, rock star killers, amazing team members, um, just, just people that you know are A players, right? But you have really bad processes. They're not going to be successful because nobody would be successful. Maybe your process to getting referrals is, I don't know, uh, guaranteeing that every single person that gives you a referral gets $15 in gym cash. Like, dude, they don't care about that. That's not motivating. Nobody cares about your $15 gym cash, right? That's not a good process. You need to find something better that's actually going to get people fired up and say like, hey, man, did you hear about this gym? It's absolutely crazy, right? But, but, but sometimes it helps to, you know, work with a mentor like us because we've tried so many processes and our gyms have tried so many processes. And so it's, it's just leveraged. So between all the gyms that we work with, plus our own, we have hundreds of different referral processes and we know which ones worked and then we clean them up, make them shiny and give them to you. Right. But you still have to get the best team members to run those processes. Right. So people and processes. Okay. You got to get those two dialed in. So let's move on to the next part. Um, and the, the final thing that I want to talk about is uh, for the why build a team is a strong team is required to have your freedom. Freedom of time and space can only be accomplished when you are working on the business and not in the business. So I talked about getting back to this big difference between the two. Working in the business is doing repetitive tasks on a daily basis, right? Working on the business is doing one-time tasks. Every day is a new day. Every day you're doing something different, something new, something that is uh, contributing to the direction and the vision of the business. So let's say you're doing sales, right? You Every day you have appointments, you're having the same conversation to sign people up. You're working in the business. Training, right? So you're training sessions at 4 p.m., 5 p.m. Then you have personal training clients and all these different things. You are working in the business. Say you are doing your accounting and your books and you're checking people into class and you're uh, processing cancellation and freeze forms and, and you're working in the business. You're doing the same things on a repetitive basis, day in and day out, versus working on the business. Maybe working on the business is forming a new, uh, joint venture with the sporting goods, you know, place down the road and says, Hey, look, uh, can you, can you, uh, add my gym into your email blast and in return for anybody that's looking for equipment, I'll send them your way, or you're building a new sign that's going to go out front or you're 
working on consuming new information from a course like ours so you know, you understand the new best practices that you're going to roll out at your gym or maybe you are uh, getting a new email list and collecting all of your names that you've had from the past 20 years of being in business into one consolidated sheet so you can leverage that and use that in your local community like that's the kind of things that I talk about when I say working on the business right it's not something you're doing every single day it's things that are going to momentously drive your business forward that's what you should be doing as an entrepreneur. And I totally understand that you cannot just do that um, when you get started. It takes time um, to build a team that is going to uh, give you that freedom of time and space. And I always say time and space because um, financial freedom, you can still earn by working within the business. You could be a killer sales guy and signing up every single person that comes across and you'll make great money. But you will not have the freedom of time because you will have to be there when clients uh, would like to sign up, whether that's in the morning, afternoon, evening, whatever you feel is the best time to get people enrolled at your gym, you'll still have to be there to do that. In space, you have to sell them from the gym, um, unless you're doing phone sales, maybe, but for the most part, uh, in brick and mortar businesses, you will have to go to the brick and mortar business if you are working in it or especially on sales or training or whatever it may be, right? So we want to give you freedom of time and space. I work when I want and where I want to work. And it does not matter um, it, you know, if I need to attend my team meetings via Zoom, I will. I go there because I like to. I like to go to the gym and I, I work out before the meeting and I meet with my team and whatever. But it would nothing would change if I just jumped on via Zoom except I would be there on a computer, except in person. But what I would say and how we would conduct that meeting would be exactly the same. And that's freedom. And that's what you'll get with the team. So before we get into tacticals on how to uh, hire people, which I'm going to share with you, I want to talk, I want to break some myths. Okay. So here's some myths that I hear um, at, when I'm working with gym owners about building a team that I just wanted to give my opinion on um, because you might have these same beliefs that need to be broken, okay? So the first one is um, a good team is a big team, right? Or vice versa, a big team has gotta be a good team. Nope, false. Um, I have worked with big teams that are shitty. They're, they just, there's, there's no communication. Um, they don't know each other. In fact, uh, Jeff Bezos, he, when he first started Amazon, he uh, instituted a two pizza rule. Um, it's kind of a funny rule, but basically what that said was any, any team that could not be satisfied uh, with two pizzas for dinner is too big. Right. So if you couldn't feed your team with two pizzas and this is a real rule, yeah, you can look it up. Um, your team was too big. Right. And why is that? Because uh, the larger the team, the more difficult it is uh, for you to uh, do things effectively. Um, and that's really the point of of running a small business. Right. Big businesses, they do things efficiently. Right. Doing things uh, the right way. OK. Very efficient but effectively, right? Effective is doing the right things, okay? So who cares if you're doing something extremely efficiently if it's not the thing that you should be doing? Small teams need to be effective and adaptable, right? And so even if you're a bigger company with 100 employees, well, guess what? Then break it down into teams of eight and have those teams be led by different direct reports. When I, when I worked for Gym Launch um, and I was their director of product development and coaching, I, was, I oversaw 70 employees, but it wasn't me with 70 direct reports. I hired managers and those managers had people that they, they had direct reports for. So it was, a, you know, obviously um, we had, you know, a manager of IT and tech, then a manager of coaching, then a, ma a manager of product development. And each one of them, they had their small sub teams, right? Because a good leader can only effectively manage anywhere from four to eight people before they just, they can't, they can't understand what's happening in that person's personal life. If somebody was having a super off day and they were unmotivated or weren't showing up uh, how they should be, they wouldn't be able to pick up with that because they have 20 people they're responsible for knowing the intricacies of, right? So you can't have these ginormous teams and expect one person to manage all of them, meaning direct reports, you know, for every uh, one leader, they should only have five to four to eight direct reports, right? Um, and then you have to start breaking them up into smaller teams. And Jeff Bezos used that two pizza rule to do it. Okay, so that's the first myth I wanted to bust. I have a 15 person team 
um, at my gym, but we have four leaders taking me out of it because I don't actually lead them really. Um, there's three people that have five direct reports each, right? Um, and so that's what makes it much more manageable um, and easy for the uh, frontline employees to get whatever they need quickly and effectively so it's not one person bottlenecking everybody else, okay? The next one would be, um, it takes a long time to build a team. False, all right? Most teams pay for themselves, most teammates pay for themselves after 30 days, okay? So let's say you want to hire a salesperson, right? They're probably going to be shitty uh, the first few weeks, okay? They're going to lose money that you otherwise could have made yourself. But if you hired the right person, um, they will eventually uh, get to the level that you were at, uh, and then they will start outperforming you, which is why you hired them in the first place was to make money, right? To, to make more money than you would make. So now you have somebody, let's say, and even if they're only matching you, even if you close 50% and your sales guy is closing 50%, same outcome, but you have all of your time back as the entrepreneur. And guess what? You, let's say you're paying your sales guy $2,000 a month and commission on top of that, you will absolutely make the company more money than that right? With your time free as the owner, then you would be paying that person. That's why we hire. Okay. Same thing with training. Okay. You could decide that you want to train, you know, 40 hours a week. I would rather pay that out because with that time back, right? I can make the company much more money than I'd be saving by doing the training myself. And that's the decision that you have to make as a leader. Um, you cannot be scared to spend money on your team because nobody is going to work for free. So it's just something that you have to get over and be okay investing in other people. It's the absolute best investment you can make, but you have to be able to do it um, and not be afraid to hire somebody and you will get your money back within 30 days. Absolutely, if you follow the guidelines on hiring the right people the right way. Sometimes it's much, much more quickly. You could, you could bring on a, a rock star closer and the dude's selling after a second night, right? Then you're like, yes, because you didn't even lose any money while they're you know cutting their teeth and learning how to sell your specific thing or operations or training or whatever it may be, right? Um, trainers, as an example, we recommend uh, that, and I'll get into the specifics of this, but we recommend that they go through training curriculum first, then they shadow, then you shadow them. So technically, there could be two to three weeks where they're not replacing you yet because they're getting onboarded. So really, um, you're not, you're, they're not saving that money from anybody else because the other person is still doing that job. But it's, it, it's crucial to get them onboarded the right way. You can't just be like, you know how to train, get in there, right? I mean, you could do that. And I did that before and I made mistakes. But um, I teach the right way to do it now after having done that a long time. So you will not make your money immediately, but if you have 20 to 30 days to float that cash of their salary or whatever their pay is going to be so you can onboard them correctly, that's all you need. That's all you need to bring on your team. So like with Fitbiz, we have a team of six people that are, are constantly working just for you guys. Um, and these are, these are great high level employees, you know, they're all leaders in their respective gyms, right? They're all the top dog at their respective places. Um, and we, we did that in less than six months, we brought everybody on and up to speed and, and, uh, and we're keeping it, you know, a smaller team, because we understand that to be incredibly effective and adaptable, um, you can't have a million moving parts. I've been in that world, where we, we saw something, um, that needed to be changed. And we knew to change it at the level that we were at, it would take months, right? With this, we can change it in days. And that's what's amazing about it. So um, anyways, I wanna go into the next part, um, which would be uh, a good team can run itself. That's false, okay? Even the best team, the best teams need leaders, right? They need to be led. They, it's just the nature of, of people and the nature of collaboration is somebody needs to lead the charge. Otherwise, uh, people typically do not, uh, do not come to agreements on everything and you end up with a lot of time lost. Even in a democracy like America, there's still a singular person that can make the call if the collective can't, right? Um, and it's the same thing with uh, strong teams is there should always be a good leader. Like I couldn't walk away from my 
my gym and expect it to have the exact same results as if um, I'm there. And, and keep in mind, guys, I only contr- I contribute less than four hours per week for my gym business. Um, I just it's just what I do. It's, it's less than an, an hour per day. Right. Um, but that hour per day is extremely leveraged and I make a lot of decisions and I do a lot of things in that hour to uh, give everybody else clarity uh, as to what they need to do. Right. Um, and so if I pulled myself out of that, then they would need to be intrinsically motivated and understand exactly what they need to do without any guidance. Uh, and that just isn't going to happen. Right. So even if I wanted to walk away from my gym, which I don't, but if I did, I would still need to replace myself with the leader, even if it's only four hours. OK. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the last thing that uh, the last myth I want to uh, break is a bad team cannot be fixed. That is false. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if any of you guys ever read the um, David Goggins book, Can't Hurt Me. Um, And he tells a story about this. I found it to be exactly the same way as as he tells it as well. Um, But he was, uh, he was the leader of a Uh, boat crew right for the navy seals and and during training uh they have their their navy their navy seals training they call it uh buds buds basic underwater demolition uh seal training right um and so he was assigned to a a the weakest team right all the short guys and the reason that they do that is because like you got to hold this boat above your head uh and so like you can't match up tall guys with short guys because the short guys, they wouldn't even be able to touch the boat. It's tall. So my point is like, he was matched up with the short guys. Right. Um, and they just weren't as good because they could like this. Let's say you had to run with this thing for two miles. Well, they would, their legs are tiny, you know, it, they just were underperforming. Right. Um, but they had this guy and it, and it wasn't Goggins. Um, it was somebody else. I forget who he was, who he was saying, but, um, he was kind of the middle height of everybody, but he was a fucking rock star and he motivated the hell out of his team. And he was on boat crew five and they just kept winning. They just kept winning every single race. Cause everything's competitive and they race, get down here and the winners, they got extra food and extra sleep. So trust me, they all were very, very motivated to, uh, when this is a thing called hell week, where it's just absolutely horrible and you get no sleep or food. Right. And so they all wanted to win. And the uh, sergeants, they wanted to see uh, if it was this team or if it was this leader who was out front, just as a crazy man, uh, you know, leading the crew and through the waves through everything. So they took him and they put him on the worst team. And guess what? That team immediately started winning everything. And the, these sergeants thought this team was just a bunch of shit bags that couldn't get their stuff together. They were arguing all the time. It was the leadership. They were arguing because nobody was taking command. Nobody was taking control. Nobody was forming a game plan. Nobody was holding each other accountable, right? So they switched out the leaders from these both of these boat crews. Now keep in mind, there's eight people on a boat crew. They only switched out one of them. They put the leader from the bad team on the good team. And they took the leader from the team that kept on winning and they put them with the worst team. And guess what? It immediately flipped. Now that worst team under new leadership that took command, took control, they immediately started winning every single race. And the team that was unstoppable, the tall guys, right? Um, They started losing and they started arguing with each other because this new leader who was assigned, they said, you have to lead this team. You can't just keep your mouth shut, right? He had to make the decisions. He just could not get these people, these athletes to communicate with each other um, to win the overall objective. And teams in business are very, very similar, right? Um, I thought when I first got into uh, owning my gym and I I built my first team, first of all, I did it way too quickly. And I just hired people that knew fitness. I didn't care about culture, right? I just wanted them to understand uh, how to help people get in shape. I didn't care if they thought about doing it like this or that. Um, and it turns out that that team was really bad, right? Uh, we could not agree. I tried to create, I first called it a blueprint through a long time ago, curriculum programming for our clients. And we just could not agree on the, on the way to do it. Some people are like, calories are king. Some people are like, you're an idiot. Some people are like, you should weigh in every single morning. Some people are like, the scale is the devil, right? And, and we just could not, we could not cohesively align. And it showed up on our events that we did. It showed up uh, everywhere, right? Um, And you know what? It was my fault. 
it was my fault as a leader. And it took me a long time to realize that. Like, I hired all of them. I trained all of them, right? What is the probability that I got the worst coaches all together assembled under one roof? Not very probable, right? It was me. I did it, right? But if I came back now, the, the current me went back 10 years and got to step in, I guarantee I could have got that team to operate very smooth, even given their differences, right? I would be, I was, I'm a different person now, right? And so what I'm trying to do is fast track you uh, and not spend the time, the 10 years it took me um, by knowing how to hire people, what to say to them, how to train them, how to onboard them. So you, you, are nothing's guaranteed, but you're giving yourself the highest probability that you're going to have a strong team afterwards, right? And so it wasn't the fact that I hired the worst people, I was a bad leader, right? And um, I had to realize that everybody is different, right? And I need to be, I need to, it starts with the hiring process. It starts with what I'm, who I'm looking for and what I need them to do. And uh, their their culture. So that's going to bring me to the next part. And so we've covered all of the common myths. I will say there are no bad teams, only bad leaders, right? And so the next piece um, is I'm going to give you a seven-step process on how to build a team. I realize we're 38 minutes in, so I'm only going to go for an additional 10 minutes in case you, it's getting late, um, but I will rock these out for you guys. Um, because it's very, very important. And it's what's given me my freedom um, when it comes to building a team. The first thing that you need to do is become an expert at the thing that you want to delegate out to somebody else. Become an expert at it. Okay. So even if it's cleaning the gym, become a fucking expert at cleaning your gym. Why? So you can hold somebody to high standards. So you can give them expectations and tell them uh, what the result should be, right? If you have no idea how long it takes to clean your locker room and somebody else uh, that you hired to do it says, it's going to take me an hour. What's your response? No. Well, how do you know you never did it? Or, wow, that's great. I'm, that's really fast. They could be sitting there playing on their phone for a half hour right? You, you need to do these things yourself, every single function, every function at a gym. Now we'll talk about generalist versus specialist. The only time, and I don't want to talk too much about it because it doesn't really apply, but the only time you wouldn't do the thing yourself is if you need to hire a specialist to do it because it is a skill set that you do not possess, right? But that is not true in, the, in a micro gym, brick and mortar. Uh, you should, as the owner, possess the skill set to do all of these things. You may not be as good as somebody else, or you may not like doing it, which is why you're hiring, but you should be able to do it, right? Uh, versus like a specialist, which might be somebody to um, like code your website. If you do not know how to write JavaScript or HTML or Python code, right, you're not going to just learn how to do that so you can hold somebody else to standards, right? You That's a specialist, right? But we don't have those positions at the gym. Everything that you would hire somebody for, you have the ability to become an expert at it or at least become an expert at finding what you need. Right. So become so if you like add, if you need to hire somebody to code your website, you don't have to be an expert at coding, but you need to be an expert at knowing exactly what you need them to do. Exactly. So that way you can find the right person. OK, so that is the first step is become an expert at everything that you want to hire out for. OK, um, and in most cases, you will need a generalist at a gym, not a specialist that has a very specific set of uh, tasks that you need them to do. Number two, you need to work your ass off to acquire the highest talent that you can. You're gonna run ads for this like you are trying to find your next 20 customers. That's how aggressive you wanna be. Uh, DM them, email them, call them. Um, all of that stuff to reach the right person. This part is not going to be easy, okay? When I go to hire a new person, it is hard to do. Um, it is, you guys know, it's like sometimes you have to run $2,000, that's a high number, $200 worth of ads or ad spend to find one person to uh, sit down and talk about your program with you, okay? Sucks, but the potential is that person will buy a $2,000 program giving you a 10X return on your investment. Hiring somebody, good talent is the exact same thing. You might spend 
uh, $200 in ads on Indeed or some of these other services, uh, which you'll probably have to do because uh, people that are talented, uh, they are not going to just be calling the classifieds, they're gonna be listed somewhere and they want you to reach out to them, right? Which you'll have to do. And so it might take you $200 to get an interview with somebody, but the return on that is way bigger than 10 times, right? This person will make you way, the right person will make you way more than $2,000 in return. And that's the way that you wanna look at it, right? Is your return on investment for the person, okay? So you have to be aggressive. Anything you would do to, to get leads to come to your gym, that's exactly what you're going to do to get potential employees to get in front of you so you can pitch them on working for you. Don't get this twisted. It's not some luxury to come work at your business. You don't have some fancy corner office where they're going to get a 401k package and all this shit, right? You're, you want somebody that is looking for an opportunity that has potential. You are growing, you're a small business that intends on growing uh, and they have freedom over their, uh, their hours. Sometimes they have uh, a great purpose driven uh, job, right? These are the things that you have to leverage because you don't have those other things. You don't have things like a high, you know, six figure salary and all of this. You don't have, that's not how a small business works, right? Especially a brick and mortar gym. But what you do have is very powerful for the right people. You just have to go out and find them. If you think you can post an ad on Facebook and say, hey, looking for the next best trainer in my town, you know, flood my, uh, <clears throat> you know, flood my email or my DM with uh, all these applicants, be prepared for crickets. No one's going to send you anything. You have to go out and get them, right? And so some of my best employees I have and I still have now, man, I had to work my ass off to find them, interview them, uh, get them on board. It was not easy, but I'm telling you, it's so worth it. So be prepared for that, right? The next thing, um, always, always interview twice, okay? Uh, first for a culture fit, um, next for role specific. And it does not have to be the same person that is conducting each interview. Most times it's better if it isn't. So for like my gym, right? Um, I always have two interviews. Number one, the, uh, the uh, operations manager will interview the, uh, we'll do the second interview. The first interview is done by the head trainer, right? Because the head trainer has the, the, the best, uh, the best feel for our culture. Okay. So he really understands our culture and how a new trainer or somebody like that would really click and drive with the rest of our team. And that's very, very important. They have to share the same core, you know, the same uh, mission statement and the same core tenants as we have. And we talk all about that in Fitbiz, uh, how to, how to develop your mission statement and your core tenants. But essentially the mission statement is like, this is our mission as a team. This is what we are here to accomplish. And the core tenants are, this is how we go about accomplishing that mission. So if somebody is not a fit for your core tenants, your core tenants, like one of ours at the gym is adapt or die, right? You cannot be afraid of change. Guys, I'm telling you as a brand new employee, you may not know this, but the fitness industry is always changing, right? If you are afraid to change, meaning that one week we're selling a six week challenge and next we're not selling that. And we're saying it's not good. And we want you to do this instead. You can't be like, well, that's it. That's it. I'm done. I, I, you know, I can't stand all these changes, right? If that is part of your personality, that's fine. You just can't work here, right? And so we need to make sure that they're going to be a great culture fit. Once we've identified that in interview number one, then they move on to the technical stuff with our ops manager. It could be the owner as well. I used to do these ones, um, but now the ops manager does. And it's basically like, look, um, you're going to be doing this. Are you familiar with this? You're going to be doing that. Are you familiar with this? You're going to be doing this. Are you interested in learning this? Do you have these hours available? Blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, and so they, they, they make sure everything else is dialed in and, and we can say, yep, they're a great culture fit. And yep, they fit all the requirements. So any employee should always, always, always follow a four R's document, right? And in Fitbiz, we give you these four R's document for each employee that you should have at your gym. We tell you which employees you should have and what their four R's should be. So four R's stand for role, requirements, responsibilities, and results. Okay. So the role is trainer, sales manager, ops manager, front desk. That's the role. The requirements are, these are what's required of the position. You need to be to the gym from these hours. You need to be motivated. You might, you need to be able to help people get results. You need to care. That's the requirements, the responsibilities. Uh, you will be 
uh, responsible for your timesheet at this time. You will be responsible for picking up your equipment after you're done. You'll be responsible for attending the gym 10 minutes before your first workout to set everything up. You're responsible for weighing clients in on a weekly basis. You're responsible, so on and so forth. These are what the, the tasks that I'm paying you to do. And finally, the results. The results are, I expect, at least... 80% retention of your clients that I give you month over month, right? A 20% churn. That's very high. I usually expect higher. I expect you to sell at least $5,000 worth of new training every single month as a coach, right? Does that sound like a lot? Well, we teach you exactly how to do it. I expect, and these are the results that we expect and we track everything so everybody knows, but every position would have this four hours document and the second interview, make sure that they can fit the requirements. If they don't fit the requirements, you don't hire them. Okay. The next part would be always, I'm sorry, uh, compensate based on the person within your overall budget. And if you can't afford someone you really want, uh, offer incentives like profit shares, uh, performance based raises or bonuses. You need to get creative. Okay. So there's been a couple times where I simply, I would say like, I need an ops manager, but the most I can afford right now is $40,000 a year salary. That's it. I can't afford anymore. Um, and I could not hire the person that I really, really wanted. Um, it would be too big of a pay cut, even though I explained to them all the opportunities of working for a small business and how amazing it's going to be. And they're getting out of this corporate job. At the end of the day, it just wasn't enough to pay their bills. So I got creative and I offered them a 10% profit share of what the company makes. And I showed them exactly how their contributions can turn into profit and what that would end up being. Now, our goal was $10,000 per month um, of profit. So if they got a 10%, that means they got $1,000 bonus every single month. Now, this is only if we hit that $10,000 profit, okay? So they did the math and $1,000 per month over the course of 12 months is $12,000 profit, which gave them the um, full-time equivalent earnings of $52,000, which was actually a $2,000 raise from their current position. If they hit these, they accepted. And we ended up crushing it and hitting $20,000 a month plenty of times, right? And they made they made over 65 last year. Um, and so that was a great decision, but I had to get creative because they were walking out and I needed them. They were so good. They were perfect for the role, right? And so sometimes you have to get creative uh, with scheduling and you have to give a little bit, okay? You have to give a little bit. Okay, so that is the next part. Next, um, after you have locked in the person that you want, you've agreed to compensation, they agree to the four hours document, um, you're all aligned with that. Um, finally, onboarding is extremely important, okay, both for their success and your success, okay, I've lost great employees or who I thought would be a great employee due to poor onboarding. Uh, they didn't think we were organized enough. Uh, we were kind of like sink or swim at that point in the business. And I turned uh, questionable employees into great employees. So um, if you bring on a rock star and you're like, hey, they should be able to figure it out. And I worked for an organization that was like this. Um, and they just said, hey, if you're an A player, you'll figure it out. Dude, I can't tell you how frustrating that is where you don't know your job. You don't know what they're expecting of you. You, you don't know how you should be doing it. Uh, and you're just hoping that you don't fuck up, right? That's not how you onboard somebody. We have a very specific onboarding uh, procedure that we teach with Fitbiz. It starts with one hour, I'm sorry, uh, one week of consuming all of the training that we give you. They, per position, they need to consume this training. Then they need to shadow for a week. Then you need to shadow them or whoever's, whoever they are replacing, right? They need, to, they need to shadow the person. And then you tell them when they're going live and when you expect the results by, right? And it's a very clean onboarding experience. They have tons of time to get hands-on experience before they take over the role themselves. But then you can really hold them to the results you're looking for and move on. Move on with what you need to do next now that you're no longer doing that, okay? Um, then finally, I will say uh, you have hired, this is the last part, step seven, you've hired the person after you've onboarded them, you need to let go. As the entrepreneur, um, as the owner, you need to let them do their freaking job. Uh, you cannot be a leader if you're doing all of it yourself. And trust me, I know entrepreneurs. I'm one of them. And I'm very particular on how I like to do things, as you probably imagined. And uh, 
it drives me crazy when I see somebody do something differently than I would do it, right? But you can't, you have to let them grow. If you are constantly stepping in to redo something or scold them instead of teaching them or things like that. And I say this because I made these mistakes, guys. I'm not perfect, right? And I learned the hard way by losing good employees um, or by, by leading the wrong way. And so um, what I learned is, you have to just let them learn themselves and, and, and every opportunity you have to give them advice, do it, take the time and teach them. And ultimately they will become such good leaders that if they can teach someone else what you taught them, wow, that is a big step that you can take away from your business because now you don't just have a team, but you have leaders within that team, right? But you have to let them do the work, make the mistakes, and don't look at it as you lost money. You're investing money into each one of these people, right? And you need to compensate them above the rest, right? Compensate them above industry standards so they don't go anywhere. And all of a sudden, your team will be so valuable. I always like to say, I give them something to lose. So I compensate them extremely well. I give them profit share bonuses. I, I reward them, but now they have something to lose. No one else is going to compensate like I do, right? But I get so much more out of them and they keep getting better and better and better and better and better. Um, and the momentum is, is extremely high because they've been at the same place working with the same people, uh, trying to accomplish the same mission for years. They're very, very good at what they do now, right? Um, but a lot, it, 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 it was me letting them do it, letting them make the mistakes, even seeing us as a catastrophic mistake, I would see it coming and I would use it as a learning opportunity, almost like raising your kids. You know, if you have kids, um, you know, the oven's hot, but if you keep stopping them every single time, uh, they're not going to know that unless it's fucking burning hot, then don't be a bad parent and move their hand. But you get what I'm saying. It's like, my point is that, um, you have to develop these people and resist the urge to just step back in and do it yourself, right? Resist that urge, um, resist that type A, you know, narcissistic tendencies that that uh, these these entrepreneurs like myself have um, and let your team flourish and, and just delegate, right? And once you do that, once you follow that process all the way through once and you simply decide what is the next the next set of tasks that you want to delegate. Okay, so maybe the first thing you did was delegate a trainer. Hey, I'm an expert at this thing, um, but I know that if I spend my time doing this, I will reach my mission or my goals quicker, right? So I need to stop doing this thing. Then follow the process that I just took you through. Just do the exact same thing. And it'll take you three to four weeks to replace yourself, okay? Then you decide wow, I no longer like inputting numbers into my books and processing, you know, cancellation or freeze forms or putting in contracts. I think I can hire a part-time, you know, admin to do all of these things. I'm an expert at it. I know exactly how to do it. And I can teach this person. Let me go out and find the right person uh, for the job, compensate them correctly, follow the guidelines that I just taught you in three to four weeks. Now you no longer have to do that. A big part of what we do at FitBiz is teach you what you should be doing when you are no longer doing those things. We teach you the order that you should be hiring people in. Um, we give you the four R's documents. We give you the uh, how to hire somebody, like what ads to place, where to place them, uh, how to interview them. Uh, we give you the training for the position. So like sales manager training, I would jump on the screen and say like, hey, my name is Joey Huber. Um, just like you guys are coaches for this gym to help the business, your gym succeed with its goals. I'm your business's coach, right? And I help you become the absolute best sales manager possible. I've been in the game for 10 years now. Let me help coach you, right? And then I go through everything it takes to sell uh, high ticket long-term programs. Same thing with trainers, all of that stuff. We give that done for you solution so you uh, can, can onboard quickly and effectively and not miss anything, right? Uh, so that's how FitBiz can help you. But if you do that process uh, and then you follow our guidelines on what to do next, now that you have your free time before you know it um, you will have a team that is is handling all of the responsibilities remember the four r's documents roles requirements responsibilities you can easily delegate all of those responsibilities until there's none left at the gym till every responsibility is covered and then we move into leadership so we'll save that for another live uh, video uh, leadership 
Maybe we'll do it next week. But leadership is a whole nother beast. Now that you have this team that is operating your business all of the day to day, you are no longer working on repetitive tasks. You're only doing one time tasks. How do you lead them? How do you motivate them? How do you hold them accountable? How do you get them to do exactly what you would do if you were there doing it yourself? right? The most motivated person, the most incentivized person is you. How do you get your team to do exactly what you would do? It's all about leadership. So today, I hope you guys like that. I taught you exactly how to build a team, why to build a team, what they should be doing, and uh, a lot of the hows when it comes to onboarding them. Um, The rest is with us. Drop a like, drop a comment, drop a share if you like this. Tag somebody if you think they'll benefit from it. Um, I I don't like to hold back. I like to give you guys a lot of stuff. So hopefully you guys enjoy this live. Next week, we'll go into leadership and how we can get this newly formed team to be the dream team. Um, And hopefully you guys can apply that to your business and crush it. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And I will see you next week. I'm out.